Greetings! I am Herbert Erpadurp, and today I'm going to build this relatively new plastic IS-2 Guards Heavy Tank Company. This kit is in 15mm scale and is made by Battlefront for their game Flames of War. I do already have some IS-2s, but as soon as I noticed that Battlefront was releasing these in plastic, I had to get my hands on a box. The back of the box has a paragraph about the IS-2, a picture of a painted example of the model, as well as an instructional exploded diagram, which lets us know that we have the option of building the IS-2 1943 version, 1944 version, or the IS-85, which I believe was the same as, or maybe the prototype for, the IS-1. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe somebody in the comments knows. Unlike the heavy assault gun box that I built a while ago, the instructions for these are available at flamesofwar.com, which some may find helpful. A link is in the description below. Inside the box there are five of these sprues that include two hull tops and enough parts to build one of the three variants mentioned earlier. You will only be able to build one variant unless you want to get tricky with magnets or do some casting. Personally, I'm fine with only making one variant. The parts look very neatly cast and have a minimum of mold lines. As you can see, the two different hull types are just different enough to warrant two hull tops. Also included are five of these track sprues, which I think look really great. This is the same as the sprue included in the Heavy Assault Gun Company box that I assembled recently, link here. In addition to the tracks, it holds the lower hull, spare track links, machine guns, as well as some stowage and external fuel tanks. The crew sprue is also the same as with the Heavy Assault Guns. Pretty decent looking, though as usual, I won't be using them. I'm starting to have an abundance of crew figures like these. I think I should do something constructive with them one day. Here's something that isn't the same as the Heavy Assault Gun box. The decals. I think these look pretty good. I did have a little bit of trouble trying to decide which version of the tank I wanted to build, even though there isn't really that much of a difference. Eventually, I decided to use the 1943 version, which is also used for the IS-85. I think it looks just that little bit more interesting. Now I have another five IS-2 hull tops for my bits box. Gotta think of something to do with these, too. Assembly of these models begins with magnetization. Unfortunately, no magnets are included with this kit. There is of course an option to use pins instead of magnets, which doesn't seem like a bad idea. I really like how magnetizing these newer Battlefront plastic tanks is so quick and easy to do. If you glue a magnet to a tongue depressor to ensure correct magnet polarity, you can really blast through the magnetization process. You can just drop them into place one after the other nice and quick. Of course, the magnets I use are a little bit thicker than what Battlefront intended, and that's why I glue them to the inside of the turret floors rather than the outside. All that really does is help to speed the process up though. I like these so much better than the resin models that require drilling. For those interested, the magnets I used are 4.75mm by 1.5mm. The lower hull goes together exactly the same way as with the ISUs, being that the sprues are identical. It's very easy. You just glue the tracks on. The parts are keyed so that you can't put them on incorrectly. I then glue the upper hull to the lower hull. It goes on just as easily as with the ISUs, and just like the ISUs you will need to hold the front of the hull down while the glue sets to avoid having too big a gap on the front of the hull. Don't worry though, the gaps can be hidden with spare track links later. Now to add details to the hull. There aren't a lot, so this is quick and easy. I glued on the external fuel tanks. I'm not quite sure if they're exactly in the right position, but I figure as long as they line up with each other, they should look fine. Then I add the rack of spare track links to the front of the hull, being careful to get the part to sit as straight as I can. You can see this really helps to hide the little gap that was there. There are also two of these boxes per sprue. I've chosen to leave these off my tanks, but I am starting to amass quite the collection of them. I will probably use the pile of them to make an objective marker or something. Now I move on to the turret. This is just about as simple as the hull. First glue the upper and lower turret parts together. The parts aren't quite keyed, but they are shaped in such a way that it will be obvious if you haven't got them together right. Next, choose the appropriate gun mantlet. The one on the left is for the IS-2 1944, and on the right is the one we want for our IS-2 1943. You would also use this for the IS-85. I then remove the mold lines from the gun. There aren't many there, but they do still need to be scraped off. I then carefully drill out the end of the barrel. I expand the hole with my knife. This step is of course optional, but I think it really adds a lot to the model's appearance. Next, I glue the gun into the mantlet. These parts are keyed so that the gun will only fit one way. As you can see, this gun has a muzzle brake, and the keying is really helpful to ensure the muzzle brake doesn't end up crooked. The next step should be obvious. Glue the gun and the mantlet to the front of the turret. There is a bit of a gap there, but if you look at pictures of a real IS-2, there is an obvious join where that gap is, so once painted it shouldn't look too out of place. It could be filled though if you really wanted to. Now to add the final details to the turret. 
I glue on the commander's hatch. I believe I am correct in placing this with the vision device protruding from the forward hatch half. The exploded diagram suggests placing it differently. Next, the machine gun is glued to the back of the turret. This part is keyed so it only fits one way, which I guess is helpful. I think this part was modelled a bit bigger and more chunky than it really should be, but it's not too bad. And finally, the anti-aircraft gun is glued into the hole on the commander's hatch. Let's have a quick look at how this compares to some other IS-2s. I have two models to compare this with. The resin and metal version from Battlefront in its glorious pink paint, and the Plastic Soldier Company version in a much less sensible green. You can see they all look like an IS-2. The resin version has much clunkier and less detailed looking tracks, and this causes it to sit a tiny bit higher than the other two. Of the two Battlefront versions, the plastic one looks much more crisp, though unfortunately it lacks the moulded on stowage the resin version has, which in this shot is the bag on the side of the turret. Comparing the Plastic Soldier Company version, they don't look all that different. The Battlefront version has slightly better detailing in the road wheels and track gear. The hull rears are all very slightly different. You can see the Plastic Battlefront version has the best track detail of the three, but it also has the unfortunate gap between the upper and lower hull. The engine decks and turrets are all relatively similar. The Plastic Soldier Company version probably has the best detailing on the grab bars around the base of the turret and the front of the tanks. The resin version has moulded in damage to the mudguards, which I quite like, and the Plastic Soldier Company version is obviously the 1944 version of the tank. No enormous differences, really. Overall, I'm really pleased with this kit. It was very easy to assemble, and the exploded diagram on the back of the box was adequate instruction, though the assembly guide on flamesofwar.com can be helpful as it has more pictures. It did not take me very long to put this box together. In fact, I timed myself building the first tank. Mind you, not in a very precise manner. It took about 18 minutes, including the time it took to clip the parts from the sprue and remove mould lines. I would imagine that each subsequent tank would go together a little bit faster. I think I might try to continue keeping rough track of build times in future videos, so let me know if that is something you guys find helpful. I didn't really need more IS-2s, but I don't regret buying this kit. Battlefront are doing some really good things with their recent plastic releases. I think these tanks are quite good looking and rather well detailed. Certainly not what anybody would call extremely realistically detailed, but still very good, especially considering that they are gaming pieces rather than true scale models. I don't know when I will get around to painting these up. It might be a really long time. I do already have some painted IS-2s after all, and there are tons of other things that I need to paint. But one day these will be done, and I think they will look fantastic. The fascists won't know what hit them when these beasts roll across the battlefield. What do you think? Have you built some of these yourself? Do you think IS-2s are for dumbs? Let me know in the comments section below, or on Facebook or Twitter. You can find the links to those in the description below. As always, I hope this video was interesting or helpful for you. It would be awesome if you subscribed and stuck around to check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching. Farewell.